I am Krishna Hanumantu from Chennai Mathematical Institute. I am going to teach a course on abstract group theory over the next uh, 8 weeks. My goal here is to introduce the basic ideas, give some motivation and do some standard theorems in the subject and to explain a little bit about why groups are very important in various areas of mathematics and even outside. So, today I want to start off by first giving you some examples which I hope will motivate the definition and then I will give you the definition and look at some properties. Okay, so, the course is on introduction to abstract group theory. Okay. Groups are algebraic objects which abstract as the word suggests certain important features of well known mathematical objects. So, I want to do some examples which illustrate this and in each example I want to point out the crucial piece of information that we want to retain. Okay. So, the first and most important example of a group that we all know is the group of integers. So, this z is the symbol for this. So, this is the set let us start with this it is the set of all integers. So, integers are for example, these are all negative integers 0 and positive integers. So, it is an infinite set consisting of these numbers. Okay groups are sets along with a certain operation on them. So, and the most familiar operation for us on z is the addition. So, what is this addition? We all know how to add two integers and what are the properties of addition? Let us try to identify this that we want to abstract out and define a group later. So, what is the property of addition? So, given any two integers we can add them and we get another integer. So, if you add, if we add two integers, we get another integer. So, this is the starting point. So, we say that inti adding integers is a binary operation in the on the set of integers. So, I, I will define this in more formal setting later, but it simply means the word binary refers to the fact that we add two integers to get a third integer. So, for example, if you add 3 and 2 you get 5, if you add 5 and minus 2 we get 3. So, if you perform the operation of addition on two integers we get another the output is one integer. So, input is two integers, operation is addition, output is one integer. So, that is the first property of addition. So, let us look at another important property of addition. There is a special element called 0. 0 is a special element. So, what do I mean by that? So, let me say 0 is a special element in z, which is to say special in the following sense. If I add, if n is any integer, so let, let us take an arbitrary element n, then if I do n plus 0, I get n back, which is also same as 0 plus n. 0 is the only integer with this property. If you add 0 to this n integer, you get that integer back no other integer has this property. If you add 1 to an integer, you do not get the integer back. So, 0 is called the identity element. Identity element for addition. Okay. So, this is the second property. So, remember again the first property was if you add two integers, you get another integer. You have a special element that we call 
identity element which has the property that if you add this to any element you get the element back you do nothing in other words. The third important property that I want to identify is every element which in this case is an integer has an inverse. What is an inverse? inverse is an element that you can add to get the identity element. So, for example, if you what element do we want to add to 5? So, we want to add something to 5 to get 0. What is that element? That element is obviously minus 5. If you want to add something to minus 3 to get 0, you will add so more generally, if you want to add a minus n to n, you get 0. So, this is an inverse. So, inverse is the opposite. So, in some sense, if you add inverse to an element, you get the identity element, which I have already declared a special element, called it the identity element. So, every element has an inverse. So, th we have identified three properties of addition on integers. If you add two integers, you get another integer there is a special element called 0 and every element has an inverse. Finally, I want to note the following property of addition. So, remember addition is a binary operation. So, in other words, we can add 2 elements. If you add 3 and 2, you get 5, but we cannot add a priori 3 elements. How do you add 3 elements? What is the meaning of this? Remember addition is only a binary operation, given two things we produce one output, but if you are given three things, there are two possible ways of doing the addition. So, if I asked you what is 3 plus 2 plus 5, you would first one option is to combine 3 and 2 first and then this now 3 plus 2 is again an integer and add 5 to it. So, this is 3 plus 2 in bracket one that means you apply the binary operation to 3 and 2 uh, and for which you get 5 and then you add 5. So, that gives you 10, but you can also do the following you can first add 2 and 5. The point is to group two things together in the first option I grouped 3 and 2 in the second option I will group 2 and 5. So, then I get 3 plus 7 which is also 10. So, I get the same answer. So, no matter how I group elements, I get the same answer which is very important. Otherwise, there will be an ambiguity on how to add 3 elements or 4 elements or 5 elements. So, this is called associativity of addition. Associativity means we can group things again I will do this more formally later, but we can group given three elements we can group two of them together in two different ways and we get the same answer. Okay. So, the, this is the fourth property of addition on integers. So, we can unambiguously add three elements. So, we can use the associativity property of addition. So, just to recall properties of uh, addition. on integers 1, it is closed. So, I am going to use this word from now on, it is closed under addition which is whenever we say a property is closed that means, if I apply that property I am within the same set. So, if I take two integers in other words two elements of z perform addition I land again in z there is an identity the second property is there is an identity element namely 0 the 0 is an identity element every element has an inverse namely minus n is the inverse of n. 
addition is associative is the last property. So, these are the four properties of addition on z. If you think about it a little bit, there is another property of addition that I did not highlight now, but which we will come to later. So, I will record it here and we will come back to it later. Another property of addition is for example, if I add 3 plus 6, I get 9 which is same as 6 plus 3. So, the order in which I perform the binary operation first 3 then 6 or first 6 and then 3 I get the same answer. This is not such an important property as the first 4, but let us record this for the moment and then we will come back to it later. So, these are the properties of integers addition on integers that I want to record and I want you to remember that these properties while they are so obvious for addition, they are not necessarily always uh, true. For example, if you take multiplication on integers, there is no inverse for multiplication if you think about it, because if you multiply what is inverse under operation of multiplication on integers. For example, 2 has inverse 1 by 2, which is not an integer. So, it is not clear that these properties always hold. So, with that, let us go to the second example, which again remember I am trying to give three examples to motivate the definition of a group. So, the second example that I want to give is the following. So, this is not so obvious, I, but I would like you to pay close attention to this. So, let us take the set consisting of 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, these are three elements. So, the, the, I it is not less I am not going to use any property of 1, 2, 3 other than that there are three different elements of a set. So, you all know what is a bijection of this set. So, I am going to consider bijections of 1, 2, 3. A quick reca recap of the definition of a bijection. What is a bijection? A bijection is a function from 1 to 3 to 1 to 3, which is 1 1 and on 2. Okay, 1 1 and on 2 are properties of uh, functions of sets, 1 1 means two different elements of the domain. So, this is the domain, this is the co-domain two different elements of the domain go to two different elements of uh, co-domain that is 1 1. On 2 means every element of the co-domain is equal to an image of something from the domain. So, codomain is equal to the range of this function. So, for example, uh, so I am going to use this notation to denote functions. Function 1 going to 1, 2 going to 2, 3 going to 3 is a bijection clearly because uh, two different elements everything in the set 1 to 3 is in the image. So, it is a bijection. It is in fact the it is in fact the identity map. On the other hand, if you would send 1 to 1, 2 to 1, and 3 to 2, this is not a bijection. Because 1 and 2 are different elements that both go to 1. So, it is not 1, 1. Of course, also it is not on 2 because uh, 3 is not in the image. So, I am not interested in functions which are not bijections. So, as I said bijection is a 1 1 and on to map. Now, I am going to define a different set. So, define which I will denote by S sub 3. S sub 3 the 3 refers to the fact that 
I have three elements in my starting set. So, S 3 is the set of all bijections from 1 2 3 to 1 2 3. So, this is the set of all 1 1 and on to functions from this set to that set. So, this is my set now. So, I started with a set 1 2 3 consisting of 3 elements 1 2 3 and I have defined a new set now consisting of all bijections from 1 2 3 to itself. So, I would like to define an operation on S, S sub 3, but before that let me first uh, list all the elements of S 3, it is not very big. For example, the function that I defined earlier as an example of a bijection 1 going to 1, 2 going to 2, 3 going to 3 is a, is a bijection, let us call that f 1. So, what are the elements of S 3? So, I am going to try to list all the elements of S 3. So, the first function because these are elements or functions, I am going to use f with a subscript to, de to denote these elements. f 1 is 1 going to 1, 2 going to 2, 3 going to 3. So, that is f 1, this is in fact the identity function meaning 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3. What are other bijections? You can also send let us call it f 2, you can send 1 to 2 and 2 to 1, 3 to 3. Note that this is also a bijection because different elements go to different elements, everything in the set is the image 2, 1, 3 are all in the image. And if you think about it, what I have done is I have just interchanged 1 and 2 while keeping 3 fixed, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, but 3 goes to 3. Similarly, I can interchange, uh, I can interchange 1 and 3, so that means I send to 1 to 3, 3 to 1 and 2 to 2 nothing happens to 2, but 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1. So, this I call f 3, what are some other bijections? So, f 3 is done, so now f 4, let us say I interchange 2 and 3. So, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2. So, here I do not move 1, but 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, that is f 4. Are there any other bijections? There are, for example, if you take uh, if one of the elements is fixed, which is to say in this 1 t 1 in, in f 1, f 2, 1, 2 and 3 are all fixed. In f 2, 1, 3 is fixed, f 3, 2 is fixed and in f 4, 1 is fixed. If you think about it, if an element is fixed, if a function fixes either 1, 2 or 3, it must be f 1, f 2, f 3 or f 4. So, the remaining bijections if there are any must not fix anything. So, then there are such things for example, 1 can go to 2, 2 can go to 3, 3 can go to 1, neither 1 nor 2 nor 3 is fixed. So, everything changes. So, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1 and this is a bijection. Similarly, f 6 also does not fix anything, it sends 1 to 3. 2 to 1 and 3 to 2, that is also a bijection and some thinking on your part tells you that these are all the bijections, there are only 6 of them. So, S 3 is the set consisting of F 1, F 2, F 3, F 4, F 5 and F 6. So, I am going to use these uh, fixed specific definitions er, uh, later, so please note that f 1, f 2, f 3, f 4, f 5, f 6 are the ones I defined just now. So, f 1 is the identity element, f 2, f 3, f 4 fix exactly one element of the set 1, 2, 3, f 5 and f 6 do not fix anything. Now, remember that when we looked at the previous example of integers, the set was easier there just the set of integers, but there we looked at addition. Here what do you want to look at? So, we want to get hold of an operation on this set. So, in other words given two functions, we want to produce another function. There is an obvious candidate to do this, we have all learned in school, if you take two functions, we can compose them. In this case, because the domain and codomain are the same, we can always compose any two functions. So, consider 
the operation composition of functions. on S 3. If you think about it, if you take two bijective functions and you compose them, you get another bijective function. So, it must be again in S 3. So, let us just work this out more concretely in a specific example. So, for example, if you do F 2 circle F 5. So, remember composition is usually denoted by circle and in practice I will just omit the circle and write this as F 2 when there is nothing I will read it as f 2 composed with f 5. So, what does this do? Remember I apply f 5 first then apply f 2. f 5 if you now see here f 5 sends 1 to 2 and f 2 if you look at the previous page f 2 sends 2 to 1. So, <coughs> f 5 f 2 composed with f 5 sends 1 to 1 because f 5 sends 1 to 2 and f 2 sends 2 to 1. Similarly, you, you can just look at this 2 goes to 3 under this and 3 goes to 2 under this. And remember if you list look back at the list of elements that we have listed in S 3, this is nothing but this is same as f 4. So, this is an example of a what I mean by the operation being closed. So, if I take two functions f 2 and f 5 in uh, in S 3, I compose them, I get another function of another element of S 3. Now, let us do f 5 composed with f 2. Now, remember I first apply f 2 and then apply f 5 and if you do this as before you can quickly check that this sends 1 to 3, 2 to 2 and 3 to 1 and this is same as f 3. If you recall when I did the example of integers I did uh, I, I noted that after listing the four important properties I said that integers also have a fifth property namely the order in which I apply addition does not matter. When I add 3 to 5 I get 8, but when I add 5 to 3 I also, I also get 8 and as this example suggests as the new example suggests order does matter here. If I do f 2 composed with f 5 I get f 4 whereas if I do f 5 composed with f 2 I get f 3. So, order in which I compose gives me different results. So, however, I can say that composition is a binary operation. So, I will say composition so composition is a binary operation which is same as saying this is same as saying that S 3 is closed see note that I have not proved this I have only checked that composition is closed at least for two elements F 2 composed with F 5 is again in S 3 F 5 composed with F 2 is also in S 3. But here I am saying that if you take any two elements compose them I get another element of S 3 and this is an exercise that you can do and maybe later I will tell you how to do this if it is not clear, but this is an easy exercise that if composition of two bijections is another is also a bijection. This is the exercise that will make justify the statement that composition is a binary operation on S 3 or that S 3 is closed under a composition. Because if I what is S 3 again let us recall S 3 is the set of all bijections from the set 1 comma 2 comma 3 to itself. So, if you compose two elements of it in other words you compose two bijections you get another bijection from 1 to 3 to 1 to 3. 
So, S 3 is closed under composition. So, S 3 with composition has the property that integers with addition have. So, this is the first property remember. So, what is the second property? There is an identity Again recall in the first example 0 is the identity element of z under addition. Here what is the identity element of S 3? It is simply F 1. Remember F 1 is the identity function from 1 to 3 to 1 to 3. So, for example, F 2 composed with F 1 is F 2. Similarly, F 3 composed with F 1 is F 3 and so on. This is clear because f 1 is the identity element. So, composing with f 1 does not change the function at all. So, there is an identity element. Now, the third property interesting property is there an inverse? Is there an inverse for every element of s 3? It, there is for example, if you do f 1 composed with f 1, which is often for convenience of notation denoted as f 1 squared. What is f 1 composed with f 1? If you now go back and see, if you go back and see f 1 sends 1 to 1, 2 to 2 sorry actually I do not want to do f 1 squared, f 1 squared is simply f 1 that is obvious. I want to do f 2 squared. What does f 2 squared do 1 goes to 2, but 2 goes to 1. So, f 2 squared sends 1 to 1, 2 goes to 1 under f 2, but by repeating f 2 we get 1 goes to 2. So, 2 goes to 2 under f 2 squared and 3 anyway does not move under f 2. So, 3 goes to 3 under f 2 squared also. So, what I want to do is f 2 squared is f 1. Similarly, if you quickly check f 3 squared as well as f 4 squared is f 1, which remember is the identity element from the previous page. Remember that f 1 is the identity element and in inverse is an element such that when you multiply, I use the word multiply here, but I should really use composition compose. If I compose f 2 with f 2, I get identity. If I compose f 3 with f 3, I get identity. If I compose f 4 with f 4, I get identity. What is an inverse for f 5? If you go back to the definition of f 5, you will see quickly a simple calculation tells you that f 5 composed with f 6 is the identity element, because you have the definition of f 5 and f 6 here, 1 goes, 1 goes to 3 under f 6, 3 goes to 1 under f 5. So, under f 6, f 5 composed with f 6, 1 goes to 1, similarly 2 goes to 2 and 3 goes to 3. So, f 5 composed with f 6 is f 1. So, in other words, in words f 6 is the inverse of f 1 f 5 and also f 6 f 5 is the inverse of f 6. So, every element has an inverse and the fourth property is the composition of functions associative which it is composition of functions is associative. This is something that you, perha you perhaps have done in the past. It is an easy check that if you compose two functions and then compose the third function is same as this. Okay. So, composition of functions is associative. To, so, that comes easily here. So, again the upshot here is S 3 which was defined to be the set of bijections from S 1 2 3 to 1 to 3 namely f 1, f 2, f 3, f 4, f 5, f 6 under the composition is closed under composition. There is an identity element there every element has an inverse and composition is associative. So, 
and I want to point out that the operation here is composition, it is not addition like in the case of integers. So, one more quick example I want to do, third example before we formally define groups. Third example which is also one of the motivating examples for groups is the following. So, consider an equilateral triangle. So, what is an equilateral triangle? So, this is a triangle with all three sides congruent. So, roughly it looks like this. So, I want to consider rotational symmetries of this. So, what do I mean by rotational symmetries? Rotational symmetries are the following. So, I want to rotate the plane on which this triangle lives and a rotational symmetry 1 is one where after if I perform a rotation I get the triangle back. So, rot rotations happen around a point. So, let us say I rotate around the point in median point of this triangle. So, and rotation is always determined by an angle. So, if at home you can practice this by cutting out a an equilateral triangle from a paper and just rotating it. So, if you rotate let us call this side vertices A B C, if you rotate what rotations preserve the triangle. So, this labeling is just for convenience that is not part of the data of an equilateral triangle. If I rotate what happens? So, for example, if I rotate by, so let us say I am rotating anti clockwise. If I rotate by 90 degrees, you can quickly see I do not get the, so if this is the starting point, this is the starting triangle. If I rotate by 90 degrees, I get something like this, some roughly something like this. So, C will move here, A will move here, P will move here. This is not same as, clearly this is not same as, not same, 90 degree rotation. Okay, so, this is actually yeah, this is not a symmetry. So, uh, I do not want to spend lot of time on what are the rotations which preserve the triangle, but uh, the following happens. So, if you rotate by 120 degrees or uh, rotate by 240 degrees, of course, you can also rotate by 360 degrees, which means we are do not doing anything. These are the rotational symmetries of of an equilateral triangle. So, let us denote these by some names. So, for example, I call this R 1, I call this R 2, I call this R 3 and let us take the group or the set G to be R 1, R 2, R 3. I am doing this example, so that you get an idea of different kinds of groups that we encounter in mathematics. So, this is a set and this set is simply the set of all rotational symmetries of an equilateral triangle. And as the previous two examples already indicated, we need an operation on this set. What is operation? Operation is again composition. So, operation is again composition. So, I can compose two rotations and if you think about it, if you compose two rotations, you get another rotation. In this case, it is very simple. If you rotate first by R 2 and then by R 3, if you per first rotate by 120 degrees and then by 240 degrees, remember I, I usually do not write the composition symbol, first rotate by 120 degrees, then by 240 degrees cumulatively I am doing a rotation by 360 degrees. So, I get R 1. 
Similarly, if I do composed by 240 degrees sorry 120 degrees then again by 120 degrees then I am composing by 240 degrees. So, I get R 3. Similarly, R 3 composed with R 3 if I compose by rotate by 240 degrees then by 240 degrees I am rotating by 480 degrees which is rotation by 120 degrees. So, it is R 2. So, as you can list all the possible binary operations. So, composition is a binary operation on G. So, the first property is true, second property is that there is an identity namely R 1. Remember R 1 is the rotation by 360 degrees or 0 degrees. Performing it does not do anything. So, R 2 composed with R 1 is R 2, R 3 composed with R 1 is R 1, R 3. Every element G has an inverse, has an inverse. As the previous uh, page shows, R 3 composed with R 2 is R 1. So, R 3 is the inverse of R 2 and R 2 is the inverse of R 1. And as again as before, composition is associative. Just like the second example, composition is associative. Composition of functions is always associative. So, that comes here for free. So, again just like the examples 1 and 2, the third example also we have a set G on which composition is a binary operation. There is an identity element, every element has an inverse and composition is associative. Okay. So, these three examples I hope give you some motivation to study groups and I will stop my first video now. In the second video, we will formally define groups and look at more examples.